up to this point, let's say we make $100, then that would have increased our sales or our revenue account for sales for that much, and then we would have increased our cash. The other way that we could have had that happen, let's say we may have made $50 that someone was going to pay us for later, which would have been something that we would be receiving later on. That's a receipt, so we would be expecting to receive that $50 later. So this is basically the way things have worked up to this particular point in our class. Well, let's say now, for example, we have some merchandise. Um, if you go to, say, the Dairy Queen, for example, if, if this is the business of the Dairy Queen and they sell their Coca-Cola to you for a dollar, would they just be getting a dollar in for cash or do you have to pay them just a little bit more than that? You have to pay them something else, don't you? You have to pay them what's known as tax, sales tax for sure, which would be a payable account for you because once they collect your sales tax money, then they in turn, the business in turn then has to send that in to the state for sales tax. Now all liabilities increase on the credit side. So at this particular junction then we would have sold the Coca-Cola for a dollar. Let's say we're at a 5% sales tax. That means that we picked up 5 cents in sales tax and how much cash then did we did we bring in? We brought in a dollar and 5 cents. So here's my two credits and that is my one debit. Does that make sense? So this is kind of a new a new liability account that's going to be your sales tax payable because when a business collects the sales tax they have to in turn then send it on and uh, then at that point the business owes that money at that particular point. Okay, another instance that we need to look at when we make a sale is that sometimes people will purchase things that they're not quite happy with and they will want to bring it back to you return it for credit. So let's say for example we sold a hundred dollars at five percent so we brought in five dollars for sales tax and we took in a hundred and five dollars in cash. And then let's say I sold uh, oh I don't know a couple of a couple of purses in my boutique for fifty dollars each at this particular junction and the customer then later brought that back to me and said you know what I really don't want this purse and so you are going to return their their money so if you're returning the money on that sale how would you do that well of course that means you didn't really sell a hundred dollars worth you only sold fifty dollars worth so you're going to have to take that out of sales you also have to give them back that particular part of their sales tax and give them back their cash. Oops. Sorry about that. Now, this looks pretty simple except for the fact that businesses want to also keep up with exactly how much people are returning. So instead of just debiting that out of the sales account to decrease their sales, instead of doing it like that, we're going to open up a new account that's a contra revenue account called sales returns and allowances. When I say contra that's going to be just the opposite that's what contra means and it's kind of like one of those shadow accounts that we just talked about earlier with our depreciation. In other words this account is going to stick like glue to the back of our sales account. It's going to be a velcro account so to speak. It's just the opposite and instead of putting that fifty dollars here this is where the fifty dollars would go. So now you would have a way on all of your financial statements then you would say sales less sales returns and allowances would equal net sales and this is how you would take it off of the others. The other instance would be let's say for example then that we sold a hundred dollars in sales at five percent tax so that means that we would also collect five dollars in tax and let's say that this person was going to pay us later 
so that means that they charged it and now we have an accounts receivable because we will be receiving this hundred and five dollars later so we are going to debit accounts receivable for hundred and five dollars well it is always in the best interest of a company to try to make sure that they can turn this accounts receivable into cash just as quickly as they possibly can because the longer it stays on the books as an accounts receivable then of course the the harder it sometimes can be to collect that money the other instance is is that it doesn't do you any good when somebody owes you the money you know well, you want this to turn it into cash as quickly as you possibly can and so in order to offer an incentive for customers to pay off their bills early sometimes they will offer a sales discount and you'll see that sometimes it looks like this and that is a form of a sales discount which basically means that if you don't pay anything on this bill the net amount of the bill is due in 30 days but if within 10 days you pay the bill we're going to give you 2% off on that bill if we receive the money within 10 days so that's an incentive for the customer to go ahead and pay you this hundred and five dollars that they owe you well if this is your customer here with a hundred and five dollars and they did send in their money early then what would two percent be of a hundred and five well you would multiply that out to be two percent and I believe that it's two dollars and ten cents is is basically what it is and so instead of sending you a hundred and five dollars the customer then would send you a hundred and two dollars and ninety cents is what they would send you instead so when a customer pays like this how much cash would you be receiving in the mail you would be receiving 102.90 now that forgave their entire debt to you so all of their debt is paid you would not subtract only a hundred and two ninety if you did that then that customer would be showing that they still owed you two dollars and ten cents so now these two guys don't match do they this debit and credit don't match and this is where the two dollars and ten cents would go would be under sales discount so now I have a hundred and five dollars as a credit one oh two ninety plus two ten as my debit which means that my debits still equal my credits if you were working on your uh, income statement how would you do that what would net sales would be equal to what net sales would be equal to your gross sales which would be this less these two guys right and that would equal your net sales so when you have these two contra revenue accounts they're always going to be stuck just like glue to this sales account so that you'll see all three of them at one time it'll have your gross sales minus minus which would equal your net sales this is just an example of a sales discount there's others that are in your textbook that will show you a few different terms uh, some of them might be five percent within so many days most of the time you do owe your bills though or your customers will owe you the net amount in 30 days the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is credit card sales we just finished a discussion of an accounts receivable where we have a customer who has charged some things and we're going to send them a bill and maybe even hopefully get um, a dis they'll, they'll send it in early so we're even offering them a sales discount this particular example but I did want to point out to you that this is not a consideration of a person that's paying by credit as in a credit card so credit card sales are handled just a little bit differently now on a credit card sale basically what's going to happen is that the customer is going to make their full payment on that credit card so let's say we'll go back to the hundred dollars this is a hundred dollars for our sales then we also had taken in five dollars on our sales tax payable this was this was a hundred and five dollars that would be coming to the company because this person had paid with a credit card they had they had chosen to pay with a credit card discovery visa master card that type of thing now unfortunately this 
business is not going to get the full amount of cash, but they also don't have anything to go on for their accounts receivable that this business is going to have to go out and solicit um, and to try to collect this particular fee because now the credit card has assumed the liability or the debt of it at this particular point. So why would a credit card company want to take on that debt? Do they do it for free? No, 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 they don't do it for free. In fact, most of the time, and I think the example in your textbook shows that a, a credit card company is going to charge 4% it's going to charge 4% to the uh, to the company so that is their payment for taking on the debt of your customer. So if we were to look at this particular instance we have $105 now that the credit card company is going to have to collect and we are going to pay that credit card company 4% of this amount. So what is 4% of $105 and if we multiply that out four dollars and twenty cents. Just for the cost of doing this particular business then we have an expense don't we? And that is our credit card expense of four dollars and twenty cents. We're not going to get to collect the whole cash amount are we? Instead we're going to have to subtract 105 minus the four dollars and twenty cents I think that's going to give us this much cash instead. But most businesses say, hey, this is well worth it because this is cash that's going to go into our account at the very end of the day. We don't have to deal with collections ourselves. We don't have to offer any discounts. We don't have to worry about if it's a bad check or anything like that or the or getting to even if it, if they paid by check. We won't have to worry about it being non sufficient funds when it reaches the bank because our that particular credit card company has assumed the risk and so it's well worth it for the business then to pay that four dollars and twenty cents or the four percent of the sales and the tax because now they will collect all of that so this is how that particular one works this is going to be your credit these are your debits your debits still equal your credit so everything is fine there